Good morning to you. Mark Sutter, Hurricane Track here. It is now Friday, the 19th of July, 2024. Who's going to see Twisters tonight? I am going with several friends and colleagues and family members here in Wilmington, North Carolina. Very excited about that. Also, we need to be looking ahead to August. Ready or not, August is coming. We're going to take a look at climatology today. Just to remind you that in any given hurricane season, we get this peak that usually comes in September, and that starts in August, usually the last third of August, maybe earlier this year. We will see. And then, at the end of today's update, I'm going to show you something really, really cool. I think you're going to like it a lot. And uh, kind of a major announcement, a big milestone that we have hit here at the Hurricane Track um, universe. I guess that's a good way to put it. So anyway, thanks for tuning in. Let's get started. In the East Pack, nothing. Little area here in yellow, 20% development. Not going to happen. It appears slowest season than any of us can remember in the Eastern Pacific. Atlantic Basin since barrel, nice and quiet, which is good because we know what is likely coming. August and that quick climb into the climatological peak time of September. I think this year everything will be much more ramped up. We've already been over all the reasons why I think that. If you have not heard of those reasons, then I don't know, maybe you're just brand new to weather. But the abnormally warm sea surface temperatures in the Atlantic, the absence of El Nino in the Pacific, the very quiet Pacific. We don't have a lot of activity that's putting shear and upward motion kind of bleeding over into the Caribbean. I mean, heck, we already had barrel, Category 5, the impacts that had in Texas. I mean, the evidence is there. And if we look at the normal climatological progression of things, we see that as we end July, August should start to get busy, especially towards the last part of the month. Maybe the middle of the month, and I'll show you why that could be possible as we move through today's update. But that's a look at the climatological uh, angle on things from a graph. If we look at it, and look at that, from points of origin, that looks kind of scary, doesn't it? That's a lot of activity. Let's just kind of drop it off. Let's go back here. This is our historical track uh, map put together by one of our supporters, Mr. Howard, over in uh, Bermuda. And this goes all the way back to 1851. There was some, see down here, 1851 to 2023, so it goes through last year. Uh, yes, there were historic records from ships. Yes, there were plenty of cyclones that were missed. And yes, we all know that. So you don't have to comment about it. We're aware that we really only have good records going back 50, maybe 70 years, and certainly in the age of satellites, you know, which would be from the 60s on, right? Anyhow, the last third of July, which we are about to enter, that's what we've seen over history. As we get into the first part of August, it starts to get busier and busier and busier, so that when you add the three-thirds of August together into a hole there, wow, that's what you get. And then you start throwing September into the mix. And you can see that, yeah, we have a problem. We know that the peak is coming. We know that we have the climatological parameters that are in place this year. That could lead to a very, very busy season. For now, though, nothing to worry about this weekend. Tropical wave there. Maybe a broad one out here. Some kind of a turning in the atmosphere. But look, there's too much dry, dusty air. The Saharan air layer is still very much in charge. And need I remind you, this is very much expected. We have seen Saharan air outbreaks. I've talked about this before. I know, but just reminding you, we see this all the time. Even in our super active seasons, you get this Saharan air that comes out, and then it just kind of magically quits, seemingly around the last part of August, and then everything goes. So use this time now to continue to develop your hurricane plan. Get that generator checked up. Maybe buy a generator, learn how to use it. Figure out what you're going to do with your pets, your family members, if they have special needs, your medications, your house, your business. You know, get the different flood mitigation stuff that I've been talking about from our partner Quick Dam as an example. Uh, storm shutters. Don't use plywood. Plywood's for building houses. Get real storm panels. Whatever your budget can allow, this is the time now to do, do, do these things and not be stressed as stressed later. All right? And we're doing the same thing here at Hurricane Track. A couple guys down in my garage slash workshop working on stuff. Mike and Matt, we're all working together to get all of our equipment ready, everything in inventory, tested, dusted off, throw stuff away that's not working. 
and we're going to do some field testing of some stuff in just a little while, making sure that we are ready to bring you the best coverage that we can once the hurricane season really does light up. So looking at the GFS here, at least over the next couple of weeks, and it is nice to be able to run this out to 16 days and nothing menacing shows up, so let's do that. There's 16 days for you. This is the 6Z GFS, 5,000 foot level of the atmosphere. And what you don't see, and I'm going to just kind of draw a box for you down here. We'll use red so it stands out. We don't see anything across the main development region that comes together in terms of a big ball of vorticity. And you notice a few waves go through there, African uh, easterly waves as we call them, AEWs or tropical waves. Yeah, those are there. But the moisture in the mid-levels of the atmosphere not cooperating, the upper levels, yeah, so-so. But that dry mid-level layer is still a big problem, and we can see that for the most part here on the relative humidity side of things. We'll still leave the box. All that brown down here, yeah, that's not favorable for tropical cyclone development at all. And the brown, which is dry air, lower humidity levels in the middle part of the atmosphere, look, it just stays so prevalent all the way through the end of the month. And once that abates and starts to go away, and it will, it just takes a little time, the very primed Atlantic will take off. I mean, I don't know 100% for sure, but I think barrel is a pretty good indication that that is exactly what's going to happen. You let off the gas just a little bit of all this negative factor out there across the Atlantic. You release that a little bit, and the Atlantic's going to take off. So again, use this time wisely. You'll be glad that you did. Do something. So, visiting our friends over at Storm 2K again, I like to peruse what they're talking about, a good aggregation of different people discussing different facets of what I like to look for, and then I can pick some of these out. And we've seen this elsewhere, of course, over here on Twitter. And my often reminder, yes, I know it's called a certain letter of the alphabet, but to me, it's always Twitter. Elon can call it whatever he wants. That's okay. I'm going to call it Twitter. As long as we're good there, we're good. So this tweet or post, I agree, we can call it a post. That's fine. From our friend Ben Knoll, um, it is coming. The latest weekly guidance, he posted this a day or two, or a day or two ago, suggests that convective forcing, where the atmosphere allows the convection to happen, is a simple way to put it, will redevelop over the Atlantic during the first half of August. When this happens, hurricane season will likely awaken from its current slumber. So we can look out here. This is through the 17th of August. We will use yellow here to make it pop. That's the green that we're talking about all through here. That is your rising motion, motion over the Atlantic Basin. This comes to us from the JMA, Japanese Meteorological Agency. JMA does a great job with that 200 millibar forecast, the vertical potential anomaly. In other words, in the atmosphere, how capable is the upper part of the atmosphere at being to diverge the air out, spread it out at the top, not converge and sink? Divergence in the atmosphere, rising motion, then it spreads out. And the Atlantic should be very primed for that, according to the JMA and other models as well we're seeing as we get into the first part of August. So that's Ben talking about it, and then, of course, Dylan, he's on top of it. And you can look at this through what we call a Hovmuller diagram. This is where we are currently. This is where we get in a month's time or so at the end of August. And mostly we see this big rising cell, all that green, velocity potential way up at the outflow level of the atmosphere sets up shop over Africa and the Indian Ocean. So from the present to the future, green is go. All this orangish color through here, yellow and orange, whatnot, that's sinking air in the Pacific, which you would expect, and then even some rising motion starting to come out into the Atlantic here. So you just kind of deduce where these are on this nice little strip Mercator projection map showing the tropics. And again, just evidence that it's coming. And finally, and Andy's pretty conservative. And, you know, you, you like that. You want somebody that's going to tell you how it is and not say everything's going to be the worst and the whatever. And he just says what's up. And uh, when you see Andy say stuff like this, you have to pay attention. We've learned that. And what is Andy saying? And who is Andy, by the way, just so you know? Down there at well, a bunch of responsibilities, University of Miami, NOAA, AOML, HRD, which is the Hurricane Research Division, and um, 
uh, FSU alum, a lot of meteorologists came out of Florida State. So Andy knows what he's talking about. Like all of us, he's not perfect. And he's made a few tweets over the years that are like, whoops, and we all have in the business. But this one is important because when Andy speaks, you should listen. After dropping off, some in the month of June, Atlantic MDR sea surface temperature anomalies have rebounded the last couple of weeks. And this is important, so I'm going to highlight it in yellow. Not great to have a positive NAO helping to shove barrel west. That's basically your steering patterns. And then you get warming during our quiet period. Feels like the basin is a loaded spring waiting a few weeks, right, before we get to the peak of the season. That spring is only going to take so much tension, and then it will release. And this is what he's talking about. We had a dip because of strong trades and the strong positive NAO, that kind of thing. Now we're starting to warm things back up again. And just look at where we were. We bottomed out, bottomed out, air quotes, and we were still one degree Celsius above the norm. Yikes. That real, People that know, you see that, and you go, well, that's where we bottomed out. Ugh. And we're already back up well above that. And each one, you know, each tenth of a degree matters. It really does because you're talking about a lot of extra energy in the water. All right? So there you go. All right. Now, my fun part. The rest of it's fun, but this is more fun. 25 years ago, hurricane track started, March of 1999. Now we're in the summer. We're in the hurricane season. And I've put together, I talked about this the other day, a new sizzle reel, hype trailer, whatever you want to call it, celebrating 25 years of amazing achievements uh, here at Hurricane Track. Now, we were on YouTube starting in 2006, so YouTube itself hasn't been around 25 years. It began, I believe, in 04, 05, something like that. Maybe it was 05. I think it was Valentine's Day 2005. Um, and so, right, we haven't been, you know, that's like almost it's a little over 19 years for YouTube. But HurricaneTrack.com and the whole Hurricane Track project and our field work and the education work and all the stuff we've done, I might be the face of it, but a, an incredible amount of awesome people helping me to get here. We're 25 years old now, so I have prepared a nice little, almost like a movie trailer. And you know, with Twisters coming out today, you get these incredible trailers now in the modern age, and I went ahead and made one myself. And I'm going to play it for you here. The audio should come through okay. And uh, then I will make it public, and you can watch it as often as you like. And I encourage you to share it, please, because I'm very proud of it. And uh, let me just roll it, see what you think. It's only a couple minutes long.
How about that? Hopefully it translated through. Again, I'll make that video public later today. I'm going to put it on Twitter as well. A little hype reel for you, a little look back. You know, all kinds of weather. Hurricane track has evolved from just hurricanes. It's always been my dream to be able to cover other high-impact weather events. And especially over the last 10 years, I've been able to do just that. A lot of it because of our work with Patreon and our terrific group of supporters from all around the world. Almost the entire fleet of all of our equipment, even our Tacoma, our Toyota Tacoma, was all crowdfunded and just a wonderful way to do this, working now with Fox Weather, of course. Got our partnership with Quick Dam, and just it's all making my dreams come true to be able to bring you the stories, the information. I mean, I'm doing this just like I would do even if I was a billionaire and I had won the lottery or something. You know, I would do this, and it's great to have the support and to be able to come to YouTube and Twitter and elsewhere and share what I do with people and educate them and hopefully make a difference in people's lives that they can be more appreciative of the weather, certainly hurricanes being the center point of all of that. After all, we are hurricane track, but it is so much bigger than that this day and age now, 25 years later, and it's very much because of you guys on that side of the camera and the microphone. So thanks a lot for helping me to get here 25 years later. Wow. Who would have thought? And by the way, the music, a combination of AI-generated and me orchestrating into the music some of my own stuff. So we call it hybrid. Um, it's amazing what we can do with AI. It accelerates my talent at creating music. And so that is a hybrid track there. Some of it AI, some of it me. And the end product is all of my own. And I'm just so proud of that little trailer there. And um, that's it. So have a good Friday. Go enjoy the movie if you're seeing Twisters tonight or the weekend. And I'll see you guys again on Monday. All right, from all of us at Hurricane Track, 25 years later. Wow. Thanks for watching. I'll see you a lot over the next 25 years.